Hey guys, so Heidi here with The Successful Fashion Designer and this tutorial is on creating a lace trim in Illustrator. We're actually gonna use both Illustrator and Photoshop to do this. This is something a ton of you guys have been requesting that I do and I'm finally putting the tutorial together. Now I will let you know that we're gonna be creating a lace brush in Illustrator using an image and the ability to create a brush from an image is only available in CC or newer. So if you're on CS6 or earlier, this will not work for you. So make sure you're on CC. All right, so let's start in Photoshop. And what I've done is I've just grabbed an image of lace off the internet. You could have scanned this or taken a photo of your swatch if you already had one, but just get some image of lace to work with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and crop one repeat of this using the crop tool in Photoshop. If the tilt of my image is a little bit off, if it's a little bit angled, I'm gonna to wanna to try to straighten that out a little bit. Okay, to make that accurate. So again, I'm just gonna crop this, kind of winging it, um, and let's see if that gives me a good result. So I'll go ahead and hit enter, return to accept that, and I think that looks decent. The next thing I wanna do is check that the edges seam up nicely. So I can do that easily in Photoshop by coming up to Filter, Other, and choose Offset. And you'll notice if I have this just set to zero, zero by default to start, that doesn't do anything, it doesn't move it. But as I move this horizontal slider to the right or the left, what that does is that moves the image to the right or the left. And now that shows me how the edges sort of seam up in the middle. So I just want them to be somewhere in the middle and I'll go ahead and choose okay because now what I can do is I can come in and I can clean up some of the parts that look just a little bit um, harsh where they come together. They don't seam up very smoothly. And you could do this a variety of different ways. I'm just gonna use my clone stamp tool. So I'll grab my clone stamp and I'll make it a little bit smaller if I need using the bracket key on my keyboard. I'll hold the option or alt key to select uh, the artwork that I want to pull from. And I can just kind of clean this up a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to kind of soften these edges where the lace comes together in the middle where there's some of it might feel a little bit harsh and hard. All right, okay. So once we have that done, and again, as I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just kind of want it to look good at a nice distance. I want to get rid of the white background because I'm going to use this in Illustrator. I want to be able to see my artwork through it. So I could do that multiple different ways. The quickest and easiest way I'm going to show you is just going to be to come up to select color range. And within here, we're going to want to make sure that we have the white selected. You'll notice if I use my eyedropper on this image, now I have the black selected. I want to make sure I have the white selected. And we're going to want to adjust our fuzziness accordingly. So get this to a point that looks pretty good. And I think that looks fine there. Again, depending on your image, you may have to have this lower or higher. We'll go ahead and choose OK. And once we have that, it has selected all of the white portion of our artwork and we just hit delete. Now, at first glance, it doesn't look like it did much and that's because we still have our background layer turned on, which is showing white. So I'm gonna turn that off and Command or Control D will deselect and if I zoom in, that's giving me a pretty good uh, representation of my lace. I lost some of these lines in here, but I think that it's fine. I think at a zoomed out enough view, it's gonna look fine for my purposes. If you wanted to redo that and adjust the fuzziness, you could. From here, I'm gonna take this directly into Illustrator. So Command or Control A, Command or Control C to copy it, jump over to Illustrator, and I'm gonna paste that in, okay? So what we're gonna do, the first thing, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller because it's quite large. All right, now I'm simply gonna take this, I'm gonna drag and drop it into my brushes panel. I'm gonna choose pattern brush and I choose okay. Now by default, I get all the straight paths, but I don't get corners. A feature in Illustrator CC, again, which you need to do this pattern brush with an image, is the ability to choose auto corners. So I'm gonna choose auto centered and auto between. Now it does, Depending on your artwork, it does a really good job or kind of a mediocre job. It's something It's something to get you started and depending on how much you need them or how detailed they need to be, you can use this feature for like quick mock-ups. If you really want it to be perfect, you might want to manually make their corners so they're very perfect. But for now, this is a great starting point. So I go ahead and I choose OK. Now if I grab my rectangle tool and I want to mock up my lace, I apply my lace and it looks pretty good. 
So as you can see, the corners got a little bit stretched and wonky, but if we're looking at this just for a quick mock-up at a zoomed out view, it looks great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete that because chances are I don't really wanna create a rectangle with my lace, but I really wanted to just show you guys the corner feature. Chances are my lace might be more something like on the top of a bra cup, so it might be nice and rounded. So I have a nice top rounded bra cup and I apply my lace. Now that looks great, but something that can happen when you're using an image to create this is you can get these breaks in between and that doesn't look so good, these white breaks. So I wanna show you a quick hack for kind of fixing those um, pretty quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to my original pattern swatch that we used to create the brush. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I'm gonna to give it no stroke and no fill. Now with my smart guides on, if you don't have yours on, Command or Control U will turn them on for you. With my smart guides on, I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's the exact size of the lace swatch. Now we actually don't want this to be the exact size of the lace swatch, I want it to be a tiny bit smaller, okay? Because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna use this rectangle to define the edges of the pattern brush. And if I make the rectangle a tiny bit smaller, it's gonna take the edge of the lace and it's actually gonna overlap it a hair in the pattern brush. And what this will do is it, as you start drawing the lace on curves, it'll kind of help fill in some of those white gaps that we get. So I'm gonna come up to transform. And instead of uh, the width being 66.594, I'm just gonna take off the 0.594. So I'm gonna make it be exactly 66. So you might wanna drop the width of your rectangle by maybe 0.5 of a point. If you're working in inches versus centimeters, this value is gonna vary. Depending on the size of your artwork, this value is gonna vary. So you might need to play around with it to see exactly what size you need to shrink that box to. So I'll go ahead and see how 66 looks. Now if I zoom in, you can see now that box is just a hair smaller on the right and a hair smaller on the left. The next thing we have to do in order for this box to be defined as the edge of the repeat tile, we need to send it to the very back. So I'm gonna choose Object, Arrange, Send to Back. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both the lace swatch as well as that box. I'm gonna drag and drop this into my brushes panel. I'm gonna turn it into a pattern brush, I'm gonna choose OK. And I don't need to make the corners, I could if I wanted, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'll go ahead and choose OK. Now let's zoom out. And let's take the top of the bra cup that we created here and let's drag and drop this uh, down to create a new instance of it. I'm holding the option or alt key to create a copy. Now I've got that copy made. So I've got the same exact curves and I just wanna show you how these two results are gonna vary a little bit. So I'll come over here and I'll select my new pattern brush and you can see those white gaps went away. So let's zoom in a little bit here so we can see really closely. So they're kind of still there a little bit, but they're much more faint. And again, what's happening is those pattern tiles are actually overlapping a hair, and that's being defined by that invisible rectangle that's a tiny bit smaller than your lace swatch. Okay, so that can really help, especially when you zoom out a little bit, get rid of those white lines, which I know can be really, really frustrating. Now, the last trick I wanna show you guys directly in Illustrator, whoops, is how to change the color of this lace. You could jump back into Photoshop and change it and bring it back into Illustrator, um, but we can also do it directly within Illustrator. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select everything, again, the invisible rectangle that's in the very back as well as the lace swatch. I'm gonna hold the Option or Alt key to click and drag and make a copy. Now I just wanna select the lace. I'm gonna come up to Edit, Edit Colors, Adjust Color Balance. I'll turn my preview on and I can start playing with these sliders to change the color. It doesn't do a perfect, amazing job. You can see it kind of gets a little bit muddy here in some of these pixels, but it's a really quick way to mock up this. And once you kind of put this on your whole sketch and you're doing this at, you know, your sketch is maybe three inches tall, so your lace is really small, this is gonna work great for mock-ups. Um, so again, I can change this color to whatever I want. And once I have a color that I like, maybe that nice pretty fuchsia, I go ahead and choose OK. All right, now I'm gonna select both the lace as well as that rectangle that's behind it that defines the edges of the tile. Drag and drop this into the brushes panel. Create a pattern brush, choose OK. Okay, and now I can change this to be my pink lace. All right, now you can't change the brush color like we normally do within the colorization method here. 
um, because the artwork is raster. You do have to create an individual brush for each individual color, but this is the quick way that you can do it using the edit, edit colors, adjust color balance option directly in Illustrator and not have to keep jumping back and forth between Photoshop. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I am so Heidi with The Successful Fashion Designer. If you like what I'm doing, I would love to share more with you. Check out my website at SoHeidi.com. You can sign up for my email list. I give away tons of additional content that you don't see here on YouTube. I would love to connect and get to know you. See you soon, bye-bye.